No matter how organized we may be, time tends to slip away from us because life moves very fast. It's no surprise that many of us are always interested in shortcuts because we don't have much time to spend on learning a new skill. With all being made so good, these shortcuts do exist and we can learn whatever we want to learn faster by taking advantage of a few actionable strategies. For you to use new information more effectively and get to easily remember something, one skill you must continue to develop is learning. Though you may have done it all your life and it may not be something that's totally new to you, you can always enjoy the opportunity of being successful every time you learn something new. If you follow a systemic series of steps and you do have the ability to learn anything faster if you've already learned things like sports, how to cook, a new language, how to drive a car, or any other relative thing. When you look at some of the skills you've learned before, you'll find out that you're not new to learning faster. And if you have done it in the past, even though you may not be conscious of how quickly you were able to pick up the skill, you can always learn to do it again. We can now have a firm grasp of how to hold on to information with the knowledge we derive from how our brain works and how we learn, all thanks to neuroscience. In fact, we can now speed up our learning process by making the most out of time. Yes, time is precious and learning does take time, but we must always strive to learn and grow since it's a huge part of life to learn new things. Today, there are proven ways you can start learning faster. If you're someone who has the intention of becoming the smartest person in the room by getting to know how to retain more and learn faster, this video course does help you explore tips on how to become a fast and smart learner with no stress attached. In this video, we'll talk about skill, learning, and acquisition. Popular author and motivational psychologist, Heidi Grant Halverson, once said that we must always be getting smarter because being smart is not enough. And one of the keys to success is to be able to learn new skills in the fast-moving, competitive world. Truthfully, in today's business environment, mastering new skills is a necessity. And the words fast-moving and competitive, which describe the nature of the world we live in today, emphasize the little time we have to get things done lest we become stale and shoved far behind. There are some general rules you can follow. Irrespective of the fact that the skill you want to learn and the person who you are will determine your learning technique, whether you desire to learn how to analyze data, use social media better, or improve at public speaking, you can accomplish your learning goals and gain new insight on how to approach learning new skills when you understand the importance of learning new skills and explore a few tips to learn better and faster. Why you should learn a skill. Successful people stick to their promise of learning rather than vegging out in front of the television. They dedicate their spare time in the pursuit of learning learning, and they stay committed to that. Do you even know those who are best at learning new skills are those who consistently succeed? If you doubt this, just think of some of the world's most successful people. Without mincing words, learning a new skill is an amazing way to leverage your spare time in the upcoming year. You can enhance your knowledge base, expand your professional networks, and beef up your opportunities for career advancement when you stay committed to learning something new. Why is it difficult to learn a skill? One of the beautiful things about difficulties is that they help us to improve our ability to remember, comprehend, and learn because they facilitate encoding and retrieval of processes. And this validates why difficulties are noted to be desirable. Speaking of why people find it difficult to learn a new skill, at times, it's actually a normal thing. It's not pretty much a big deal because whenever you're embarking on a new thing, it's like setting out for an adventure. Of course, there will be some changes and new connections between neurons because a specific part of your brain is about to get rewired. Sounds funny or clumsy? Well, it isn't. The simple science is that when you make things more difficult and challenge yourself, you open yourself up to a new change that may shake you a bit. However, do you ever wonder why some people learn something today and in the next few hours they're blank? Have you ever tried to master something and you feel you're doing great at it? until you have to do that thing and you realize that you're blank. Many of us have experienced this at a point in time, and one of the reasons why this happens is because the learning conditions we are used to were too easy, and the simple thing we need to do to overcome this for our subsequent learning is to work on improving our learning by practicing smarter. Identify what works for you and stick to it. You may want to use effective methods, such as spaced repetition, increasing your interval between the repetitions when you're first learning something. Variation in complexity, checking if your performance can be affected by varying the weather, the rules, the distractions, the environment, the exercises, or other elements. Basically, purposely challenging yourself to see your stance or retrieval. Before you ask anybody for help, try your best to remember that thing. How long does it take to learn a skill? Most of us are haunted by the possibility of not 
not doing something better, and this thought often prevents us from getting engaged in something new. We have no choice but to quit and find something else to do just to get rid of that feeling of angst. However, one thing we often miss out on is that we don't know that we can benefit from huge increases in a skill when we give in a little persistence while we're experiencing the usual challenges during the early hours of trying something new. In a very short period, you can experience dramatic improvements if you persist and practice intelligently. Picking up new skills extremely quickly is quite easy for the brain for it's optimized for such a task. Take note that the 10,000 hours of mastering a skill is nothing but an illusion because it takes only 20 hours to move from knowing nothing to being pretty good. Types of skill. Hard skills, also known as technical skills, and soft skills are the two major types of skills. For optimal performance and advancements in most jobs, both skills are necessary, and it's recommended that you possess the two. Speaking of hard skills, these are the skills you gain through any life experience via training or technical knowledge. For example, you may be able to speak a new language fluently if you studied a foreign language. You may know how to use Microsoft Excel if you've taken an accounting class. You may know how to use a point-of-sale system if you've worked in food service or retail. Some of the most in-demand hard skills include programming languages like Ruby, Java, Python, and Perl, storage systems and management, marketing campaign management, user interface design, mobile development, data mining, statistical analysis, SEO, SEM marketing, network security, Adobe software suite, database management, bilingual or multilingual. On the other hand, if you're still searching for work, you'll find soft skills to be very essential for your career because they're the traits and personal habits that frame your interaction and work relation with others and how you work. Some of the most in-demand soft skills include empathy, willingness to learn, organization, adaptability, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, teamwork, open-mindedness, effective communication, dependability, integrity. Top skills you should develop. To start with, no skill is useless, and whatever it is that you're able to get your hands on, make sure you work on it, groom it, nurture it, and keep it growing. However, if you're looking for a job, these are some of the skills recruiters are always after. Number one, business acumen or commercial awareness. For someone who's in the business field, you're expected to bring something to the table. You should be able to provide insight on how your prospective company can compete in its marketplace and the changes it can make to achieve higher sales. You should know what makes a company tick and be cognizant of how a business or industry works. Number two, communication. Since we're all social creatures and no man can exist on his own without interacting with others, communication skills are then a priority. Some people don't know how to relate with people or even express themselves clearly and better. And this is why communication is a skill. You should be able to listen and as well send your message to the audience in a focused, concise, and clear manner. Critical for success in any occupation, communication helps you to efficiently and effectively present and receive information. And it encompasses writing, observation, actively listening, and speaking clearly. Number three, teamwork. This can also be an interpersonal skill. Can you work with others? The organization or company is a group of people. Every company, business, or organization has a set of goals and business objectives that demand positive working relationships. So learn to be a team player. Number four, negotiation and persuasion. How convincing can you be? In the business world where things can be a bit bloody, being able to negotiate and persuade is a top skill that will always help you sell and achieve your goals. Number five, problem solving. The thing is, no company wants a liability. If you're a problem solver, then you're an asset because the board will be quick to call you to ask for your suggestions or opinions whenever there's an impending crisis that needs to be attended to urgently. Learning to be able to approach problems from different angles and resolving issues and solving problems with a logical and analytical approach is a top skill. Number six, leadership. You don't need to be in the top position before you can lead. Even if you have the lowest ranking at your place of work or you're the youngest in your family, you still have a chance to exercise leadership because leadership is not constrained to positions specifically or a set of people. Leadership starts with leading by a good example, setting deadlines, assigning and delegating tasks, doing what needs to be done at the right time, motivating teams, and even doing more than you were expected to do. Number seven, organization. You need to be organized because this is what shows your employer if you can meet deadlines and focus and get things done. You must learn to manage your time well, work efficiently and productively, and prioritize. Number eight, perseverance and motivation. 
In life, there will be several challenges you'll face. While some will shake you very hard, some will just brush you off a little bit. But the beautiful thing about these challenges is that they help us to become better and wiser. However, how you cope with these challenges is determined by how much you can persevere and motivate yourself not to give up. Are you the kind that gives up when the going gets tough, or you're someone who tries to stay cheerful and even wear a smile when you're passing through difficulties? It could be tough. Trust me. I know. However, as long as we're still living, there's hope and we can't give up. No, not yet. Number nine, ability to work under pressure. Many tend to feel torn apart when they're under pressure. Your ability to not feel too stressed or overwhelmed and keep calm in a crisis is a top-notch skill. Number 10, confidence. You need to exert confidence in who you are, the company you work for, and your colleagues. True confidence is the absence of pride and arrogance, and this is why confidence is a skill because not everyone can be confident without being cocky or arrogant. There are a host of other skills that can boost your career, and they include basic coding, data analysis and statistics, digital literacy, foreign language, project management, public speaking, social media and digital marketing, speed reading, video and audio production, web development, adaptability, creative thinking, reading, Photoshop, productivity, self-management. In this video, we'll talk about smart learners and efficient learning. You must have probably heard of the words smart learners. While these words are used and explained differently by many people, smart learners are simply those who foster a smarter and more efficient learning atmosphere by using certain habits. The learning community is fast growing and smart learners believe that there are always ways to learn in a better way. What is efficient learning? To start with, there are widespread techniques applied to this blanket term called efficient learning. The simple point is whatever technique helps you to retain information easier and smooths the learning process for you is what you should stick to because no method of learning efficiently is superior to others. However, know that when it comes to finding what method is best for you, there are no right or wrong answers. Consequently, it's best that you explore different methods so that you can be fully convinced about the tricks and tips that work for you. Efficient learning, simply put, primarily focuses on or encompasses retention, recalling, and comprehension of a discourse, subject matter, or topic. What you can do to learn more efficiently. Eat and avoid certain foods. Foods that you should avoid eating include white bread, fruit juice, and margarine. Cookies, donuts, and a host of other highly processed foods or those with refined sugar should be avoided because they tend to inhibit learning, according to research. Speaking of the good foods, it's recommended that you eat more blueberries, avocados, celery, spinach, broccoli, walnuts, salmon, and sardines. Foods with omega-3 fatty acids and folic acid are good brain food, and some of these foods can help to reduce brain injury and also improve focus and foster a better memory. Whenever you're planning on studying, make sure you eat the right foods around that time. Number two, drink water. We experience a 10% decline in cognition when we feel thirsty. This is in accordance with a study. Your learning capabilities can be inhibited by a mild case of dehydration. And if you're dehydrated, there's a high chance that your brain won't work right because our brain contains 73% water. So do well to drink enough water and try to stay hydrated over the course of the day. Number three, sleep. A simple six minute nap can help improve memory. This is in accordance with a German study. Basically, this explains that a long sleep may not be what you need to relax and learn better. Brain function in general can be improved by sleep. So make sure you get enough sleep. Number four, collaborative learning. Collaborative learning has the potential of giving you long-term retention benefits, a deeper understanding of the subject, more engagement, and an improvement in both collaboration and communication skills. You stand to enjoy an array of benefits when you study and learn together in the right kind of group. However, there are some people who naturally prefer to study by themselves, and for this kind of people, what they need to work on is improving their independent learning. Number five, remove stress. Stress will make it difficult for you to learn and even remember what you learned, irrespective of who you are. If you're stressed out, there's a good chance of blanking on an answer during test time. Therefore, you must work on reducing stress by practicing all kinds of techniques. You can stay calm and remove stress with techniques like meditating, breathing exercises, and physical activity. Number six, listen to music. Calming and soothing music has been noted to be very effective for learning. A study affirmed that music helps students to be more receptive to information, and it is a useful tool in improving studying. 
Number seven, avoid multitasking. When you're multitasking, you're stressing your brain to be jumping from one task to another that's entirely different. Multitasking can hamper the ability of your brain to properly process information and store new information. You'll always be distracted with multitasking. While others may want to do multiple things at once, find yourself in a learning environment where you can do one thing at a time. Number eight, teach someone else or think about it. While we teach, we learn. This is an old saying that works just fine. If you cannot teach, just think about helping someone and you may as well reap the same benefits. Number nine, try various learning techniques. There are several forms of learning, not just techniques per se, that you can always try out. So, learning to use various strategies or test running different methods can be a very efficient learning technique. For example, try collaborating with people and forming a study group if you study alone most times. Listen to podcasts or speeches to learn if you normally learn via visual aids or a book. In this video, we'll talk about 10 remarkable traits of successful learners. Number one, persistence. One of the things that prevents us from achieving greatness is the lack of persistence. For you to achieve a goal, you need to put in the needed amount of work. But unfortunately, only a very few people manage to do this. That is why all the grand ideas and ambitions in life of many are just there, wasting away. Understand that learning is a continuous process, and you can't use just a single day to learn and know everything. Even if you get the basics, keep learning more, and keep doing better. Don't be like people who don't care about the process but only want to see the final product. Be concerned and interested in both. Number two, patience. Successful learners are masters of patience and persistence because these two attributes are siblings. You can't be persistent if you're not patient. And if you're not persistent, it's an indication that you're not patient enough. In your journey to accomplish your goal, Persistency and patience are the two elements that will guide you to keep your boat rowing through the hurdles and winds you're likely to experience. Number three, conceptual learning. The final grade that you get isn't what matters, but your understanding of the concept. Understanding and grasping concepts are the core beliefs of successful learners, and you should focus more on building and strengthening your concepts. Number four, strong memory. After building a strong concept, there are some things that you must memorize. You need to spend more time on building a strong memory because maximum memorization and minimal concept is required for some things. Language is an example. Number five, leading abilities. Successful learners enjoy the opportunity of improving their social status and having more influx of wealth with the knowledge they possess. With this knowledge, they're admired, respected, and recognized as a learned individual. In social gatherings, you'll find them to be very important with lots of accolades showered on them. Their aura has a magnetic effect, and they become a leader by nature with the personality created as all these factors add up. Number six, discerning valuable from the useless. Successful learners understand that they cannot give their 100% to everything that comes their way. They understand the 80-20 principle, the Pareto's principle. The consciousness they've derived from this has helped them to be able to know what really requires their attention and what doesn't. Number seven, bold attitude. It takes a bold attitude to learn successfully. Though you may find this to be a bit weird, the simple fact remains that it takes courage to learn anything. For example, someone who wants to learn a subject or a skill understands that there's a level of effort required and there's a need to dedicate time for learning and despite recognizing how tedious it may be, still goes ahead. What else will you call this if it's not courage? One of the habit of successful learners you must learn to emulate is being courageous to take on a bold attitude as you embark on a path that's laced with uncertainty and hardship. Number eight, questioning. You'll be able to uncover some aspects that you never know about when you question yourself and your logic. As a matter of fact, one very useful learning method you can make use of is self-questioning, also referred to as elaborative interrogation. Questioning the matter is the key to effective learning, and if you want to attain perspective by looking at a topic from diverse views and angles, you need to question while you learn. Whatever it is that you're trying to learn, ask yourself questions about it. Number nine, following routines. One of the most useful techniques you must learn is how to manage your time. This is very crucial in this world that's replete with distractions. A routine and priority order will always help you because daily routines can be quite effective for time management. Thus, you must learn to create and follow routines. However, know that it takes a whole lot of high self-discipline to follow routines. Number 10, sticking to their learning style. 
As earlier mentioned, everyone has their respective learning style that works best for them. While it can also be interesting to explore other learning styles, it's advisable that you stick to your learning style. You'll be able to maximize your learning and focus your learning methodology according to your style when you know the kind of learning style that works best for you. Major learning styles include kinesthetic, hands-on learners, reading-writing learners, auditory learners, and visual learners. In this video, we'll talk about learning styles to help you learn faster and smarter. As mentioned in the just concluded chapter, everyone has a unique style that works best for them. This explicitly connotes that learning styles aren't a one-size-fits-all kind of thing, because what works for a fellow may not work for the next person. What are learning styles? In a world where we're constantly exposed to need to learn before we can thrive, the system or the techniques that do help us to learn are the learning styles. Speaking of these styles, different experts have put forward several types. There are more than 70 different learning styles according to Vanderbilt University, and several schools of thought on learning have also suggested ample distinct types of learning styles. However, the four styles captured in the VARC model are regarded to be the most popular, and they are kinesthetic, physical. Those who have this learning style learn best by being physically active, doing or moving. Reading, writing. Quite self-explainable, reading and writing is the best form of learning for those who have this learning style. Auditory, aural. Learners who have this learning style learn best by hearing. Visual, spatial. Learners learn best by seeing. When you look at these styles, do you resonate with any of them? There's a strong possibility that you will, and it's also possible for you to have a blend of the styles. Visual learning style. If you're fanatic about visuals and you prefer watching videos and love to see presentations that contain graphs, charts, and pictures, this visual style might be your style. You'll be able to take in and retain a lot of information much faster if you're a visual learner because visual information gets processed faster by our brain compared to plain text. Auditory learning style. There are some people who find it easy to learn what they hear. This kind of learner will go to classes and won't bother much about reading because they're sure they'll perform excellently by just listening to the lecturer, teacher, instructor, or later find audio to listen to. People who fancy listening to audiobooks and lectures find the auditory learning style to be quite apt for them. Reading, writing, learning style. People who have their minds easily imprinted by the words they read and write do enjoy reading and writing, and such people do have reading, writing as their most suitable learning style. If this is your main learning style, with little effort, you'll be able to retain chapters, paragraphs, and ideas. Kinesthetic learning style. There are some people who love to get active, and get their hands on. People like this will find the kinesthetic learning style to be the perfect learning style for them. People like these are often fanatical about participating in experiments and practical activities and may tend to frown at theories. Tips for faster and easier learning. Number one, match your dominant learning style. It's high time you started working or finding out which learning style suits you best. And the way to do this is to start applying these techniques. As soon as you're able to find out your predominant learning style, and you're applying it, you should also work on knowing the possibility of adopting other learning styles on some occasions. Number two, mix up your techniques. Mixing up your techniques can be very helpful in learning faster and easier. Breaking out of your normal learning routines is a great way to exercise, and this is the same effect that exercise has on growing and strengthening your muscles. Basically, the point is that you should exercise your brain by mixing up your techniques. Number three, improve your weaker areas. We all have weaknesses when it comes to learning. For example, let's say you realize that you're not much of a visual learner. Rather than just dismissing that as nothing to worry about, make it an intriguing challenge to improve. You can commence your journey to improvements by watching videos and the likes. Take note that learning will become easier for you as you strengthen your cognitive skills overall and when your attention is on learning itself. To get faster results, you'll be working on improving your weaker areas and getting better. Number four, for better retention, read out loud whatever you are trying to learn. A great way to retain what you're reading into your mind and memory is to read it out aloud. Though this may slow you down a little, you'll be the one to reap the juicy retention benefits in the long run. Number five, regularly test yourself. Testing yourself is a great way to boost your retention of information. Simply put, whatever it is that you feel you're struggling with, keep testing yourself to see how well you'll perform. In this video, we'll discover about 10 tactics to increase brain power, memory, and motivation to learn better.
Most times, we tend to find ourselves stuck in the getting ready process as we try to do more of the things we love and maximize our time. As we tend to never actually jump off even though we want to get better every day, live a happy, successful life, and achieve our goals, it becomes necessary for us to find the motivation to do what we must do. Motivation can be something that you create, and it need not be something that happens to you. You cannot hang your chances of moving forward on waiting for inspiration. You need to light your own fire by awakening and channeling your self-motivation, which is the most powerful form of motivation. On your quest to increase your motivation, memory, and brain power, here are a few things you should do. Number one, simplify your life. To be sincere, there's nothing beautiful about complications. You'll be able to focus your energy on accomplishing your goals and maximize your time when activities that don't motivate or excite you are eliminated or delegated. For you to be able to simplify, you must plan your life creatively. Your life will become more focused if you can carve away the unnecessary by simplifying. This will ultimately lead you to motivation. When all the projects and tasks you need to do clutter and confuse your mind, it will be very hard to stay motivated. So, work on simplifying things. Number two, focus on how far you've come. Do you know that you can set yourself up for success if you can become more conscious of how your brain works and change your thinking? Stop thinking of how distant you are from your dreams and ideals and embrace the habit of measuring your success from how far you've come. The chances are high that you'll feel happier and more energized when you don't talk in generalities but in specifics. Measuring your progress and using your brain to solve and visualize will always help make you happy. Reflect on things you've accomplished from a specific starting point instead of focusing on your ideal and train your brain to measure specifics. Number three, set measurable goals. There's no denial about the fact that we feel inspired, motivated, and happier when we make real progress towards our goals. Note that the future is the future, the past is gone, and what we have now is the present moment. Thus, making better use of our time is the only choice we have since we don't have the power to stop time, and we must keep moving forward, whichever way we know how to. You'll feel way worse and possibly get demotivated to press on if you start comparing yourself with others. As you outline your goals, make sure you try to find the meaning, purpose behind them respectively. In terms of your personal progress, visualize what achieving your goals will mean to you and make sure that, for each goal, there are specific measurements. Number four, shift your motivation from getting to giving. Wayne Dyer once said that the things we look at change when we change how we look at things. And this is very true. Most of us have the all about me and just me mentality in our endeavors and relationships, which isn't really good enough. However, you can help your mindset to shift from solely receiving to giving by being more consciously awake to the world and coming from a place of serving and helping. It can become a true purpose and focus for you when you focus on giving. What you stand to enjoy when you do this is that more space for abundance will be created in your brain and your motivational energy will always be high. Surrounding yourself with people with a likewise mindset and focusing on giving and gratitude will also fetch you the benefit of being more creative in your approach to improving. Number five, create and repeat a new habit. You'll be helping a lot in creating incremental improvements when you get your brain to wire new pathways by doing something new repeatedly. However, take note that consistency and repetition is the key to start a new habit. Maybe you desire to improve your speaking, create videos, go to the gym, or whatever it is. For example, you may start building your strength and stamina by running every day if you're gearing up to run a 5K. Likewise, repetition is the key if you desire to start a new morning routine. Number six, direct your subconscious mind before sleep. Never go to sleep without a request to your subconscious. Thomas Edison. Make a request to your subconscious mind before you go to sleep. This is one of the things that successful people always do, and it's a great habit to emulate. Visualize the experiences, questions, ideas, and challenges before you sleep. You can spend just a few minutes doing this, especially if you're looking for answers regarding a project or there are decisions you are struggling with. Most of us don't know that our brain is a fantastic problem-solving tool because we're often too quick to throw in the towel. There are different ideas and connections that will be created when you put your subconscious mind to work by visualizing your achievements and goals. You can always start putting things into action after you've written down everything that comes to your mind when you're up. Your subconscious mind is very amazing, but you may never know this until you put it to work. Number seven, focus on your environment. Most times when we speak of the environment, 
A large part of the environment involves the people you surround yourself with. The things and the people that support your life's growth and business are those you should surround yourself with because, in one way or another, your life will be changed by the people you spend time with. You'll be motivated to become better, successful, and happier when you hang with supportive people, but you'll be pulled down when you're hanging around with cynics. So it's your choice to either choose to roll with those who celebrate your success and inspire in your creativity, or with people who stifle and bring your energy down. Number eight, express more gratitude. Gratitude is a great dose that you should unashamedly get high on because you'll be less concerned about what people have, and you'll be less envious when you express gratitude for what you have. In fact, your change will be immense when you're grateful for the people around you and what you have. Gratitude deepens your motivation and makes you a lot more creative. Everything is appreciated with gratitude, and both your feelings of abundance and energy can be increased by it. There are several ways to practice gratitude, and if you find any that works like magic for you, stick to it. Number nine, visualize your ideal future. Visualization is a very powerful tool, and it will work immensely for you if you know how to use it to your advantage. Focus on your why whenever you feel your motivation is lacking, and when you challenge yourself to think bigger or start thinking bigger. You'll be increasing your brain power and motivation. You'll enjoy having a deeper meaning and purpose in your everyday life when you feel you're actively involved in something bigger than yourself, and you're working on something greater. Thus, do well to identify and focus on your bigger vision. For you to be happy with your progress, what would have to happen? What's your bigger purpose in the next three or five years? Where would you like to be? Number ten: Take more actions. You can make a real difference in your life when you do what you've been avoiding. And face your resistance and fear. Note that a lot of things in your life are likely to start suffering if you keep resisting taking on what you should have done. Yes, sometimes the large number of tasks we have at hand can make us feel overwhelmed. However, the fact that there are lots to do doesn't mean we should be completely blind to making an internal commitment to get things started and prioritize to use our time effectively. As a matter of fact, other aspects of your life can be impacted by your newfound energy. If you just go back to start doing what you should have done, get started and take one step at a time. In this video, we'll discover about eight powerful learning hacks to boost your learning ability. Number one, define goals. Your brain will be all over the place if you're yet to finalize a direction, and therefore you must guide your brain to a specific path if you don't want to be plunged into the distractions and confusions that lie in the learning process. You'll be able to save a lot more time when you're able to define your goals and figure out what you want to learn as you set your goals. However, the goals you set for yourself should be smart, specific, set boundaries, and aim for what's achievable, measurable. How do you measure your progress? Attainable. Accomplishing your goal will be difficult if your mind cannot comprehend it. Simply put, be realistic, relevant. Your goals should align with your values and beliefs. Time bound. If you don't want to be caught in the web of procrastination, it's important that you have a time limitation. Set a realistic time frame. Number two, take handwritten notes. Do you know that we have more chances of remembering whatever we write down? Most of the time, we tend to be lazy. Or maybe too busy to jot down some necessary details, thinking that they're too easy to remember. However, what most people don't know is that our mind is more attached to something visual, and this is why we should embrace writing things down rather than going through the stress of repeating things a hundred times in your mind. Write them down physically. This often helps the brain to remember better. If you learn to cultivate the habit of taking notes, you'll get to see the results yourself in a short time frame. And you'll be surprised to see how your mind can be more glued to what you'd written down. Number three, go for short learning sessions. It's recommended that you go for multiple short episodes rather than focusing on long learning sessions. You'll end up wasting both your time and energy if you want to go through a quicker way by subscribing to long learning sessions. Because we humans cannot focus on anything for too long. Maybe you want to learn a skill, or there are classes you must attend. Long hour lessons aren't helpful. They won't help you learn better. And this may even be one of the reasons why you're struggling to retain what you've learned, because you're working yourself out to help your brain retain information more efficiently. Break down the learning criteria into smaller parts. Number four, share knowledge. You need to give away if you want to get more. How do you give? It's simply by sharing your knowledge. The fact that you're sharing your knowledge doesn't mean you'll have less of it, because as you're giving out some information, you're also taking in some information. Learning is not a one-way thing; it's a two-way process. 
In fact, if there's confusion in your mind, you can get more clarification when you talk about it, and your concept can even get strengthened by the feedback you get from sharing. More so, you can get to contribute to the cycle of learning when you share your knowledge. Number five, set schedules. You can boost your learning power if you use the benefits of setting schedules to your advantage. If you set a routine, your brain will be used to it. You'll be able to achieve your goals promptly when you have a set schedule, and if you have a regular learning schedule in place, your brain will be able to retain information better. So, have a routine. Number six, organize information. It's important that you learn how to be organized mentally so that the new information you take in from the new skills you learned shouldn't make you get confused. Don't let your brain get jumbled up with needless files when you keep saving files on it. Just see your brain as a computer. We all know how important it is for our hard drive to have enough space and not be jam-packed with new files every day. So what should you do? It's recommended that you give your brain some breathing space. You learn how to play the guitar today, and tomorrow you want to start keyboard training too. Come on, don't be too hard on the poor brain. It's a good thing to take up new skills, but make sure that you space out the repetition of newly learned ideas and the intake of new knowledge. Number seven, use various techniques. This has already been spoken about earlier on, and as explained earlier, we all have our respective learning styles. It will be easier for you to retain new information if you learn with your learning style. However, limiting yourself to one mode of learning isn't good enough, because a fine mix of various learning styles can be quite beneficial too. So while you try to be sure of what your predominant learning style is, you should also consider reading books, listening to YouTube videos, and or attending webinars or workshops. Just alternate between all the available options. Number eight, use time effectively and keep a healthy brain. Don't waste away your time doing what you shouldn't, and don't also give your time to long hour lessons where you will end up learning almost nothing. Use your time effectively. In your free time, you can direct your unconscious mind to an appropriate activity and whatever skill you're trying to learn. Make sure you do something related to it every day. More so, know that only a healthy brain can absorb and retain new knowledge easily. So, make sure you boost the performance of your brain by ensuring your daily routine include meditation and mental exercises. Additionally, eat a healthy and well-balanced diet and have a good sleeping schedule. You'll learn nothing if your mind is exhausted, sleepy, and tired. In this video, we'll discuss about five hacks to speed up the learning process. Number one, shift your attention from the amount of time you practiced and redirect your focus to several repetitions. The amount of learning repetitions that we engage in is the key when we're learning something, and the time we spend while learning isn't the key. Most times we deceive ourselves with how long we learn. We're even proud to say something like, I studied for six good hours. But what most people are oblivious of is that repetitions are far more powerful than duration. The military, musicians, athletes, and top performers all understand the high significance of the power of repetition. Repetition wires our brain, and this is why it's considered to be a very powerful lever. So think more of how often you practice your skill, and think less of the hour you spend doing it at a stretch. Number two, break everything down into small chunks. There are several smaller pieces of chunks of information that are housed in every skill of piece of knowledge that we attain. And one of the ways our brain learns is through chunking. So, what are you to do? Foremost, break down the task you have at hand into smaller chunks, and then proceed to the next step, which leads us to number three. Number three, perfect each chunk. Now you focus on working and mastering each chunk at a time. At this stage, you may have to revisit the first step, which is repetition. Whichever chunk it is you're starting with first, keep repeating it to master it effectively, and then proceed to the next step, which is perfection. Once you're done perfecting that chunk, you move to the next chunk. As you keep perfecting these chunks, you're gradually creating a chunk chain. Don't forget that there's a whole bunch of smaller parts comprised in any skill you're trying to learn. And as you work on these chunks individually, you'll get more insights and perspectives. Number four, do you like the sound of games? It's game time now. Your next step is to convert the learning process into a game. Create a game that you can play. Gaming is an effective strategy to learn something new, and we have more chances of getting immersed in repetitions of what we're learning and being carefree about the time when learning becomes an enjoyable game. Our brain likes games, and so do we. Make sure you create a reward system as you set the rules to the game, because the full effect wouldn't be complete if there are no rewards. Number five, work and rest. While you're going through the steps and you're getting immersed in it, don't forget to take fulfilling and refreshing breaks. Make sure you take breaks to recharge any time you feel your energy is dissipating. 
As you're learning, perfecting, and linking the chunks, be sure to recharge so that you can have more fresh energy and a well-rested mind. In this video, we'll talk about eight ways to train your brain to learn faster and remember more. It's high time we started focusing on learning how to train our brain and stop spending excessive time on improving our bodies. Life is all about balance anyway. If you can go for hikes or run outside to train your endurance, or go to the gym to train your muscles, you should also be eager to train your brain. Do you even know that you have several benefits to enjoy when you train your brain? Well, you do. And some of the benefits you stand to enjoy will include avoiding diseases that hit you as you get older, finding it easy to pick up a new language or a new skill, being a faster learner in all sorts of different skills, and avoiding embarrassing situations because you cannot remember the face or name of a person. As you now understand the need to improve your cognitive skills and train your brain, here are some tips that can help you to learn faster and remember more. Number one, work your memory. A great way to train your brain to learn faster or remember more is by working on your memory. When it boils down to doing this, you can opt in for a method that goes well with you. According to brain fitness studies, you can help to improve the function of your brain by discussing a particular thing that you wish to remember with others and then consciously work on trying to remember that particular thing. Let's say you're trying to learn the names of your colleagues at your new place of work. Having a conversation with them and adding their names to the conversation can be very helpful. For example, let's say the name of one of your new colleagues is Josh. You can say something like, I really love that movie, Josh. Or, so what time do you go for lunch here, Josh? Flexing your brain is a great way to practically train your brain. Number two, do something different repeatedly. You'll be improving specific cognitive functions when you help your brain wire new pathways by doing something new repeatedly. Getting to learn isn't about your strength. It's about how you can cultivate with enough repetition. Whatever you may have been doing that isn't helpful, make sure you establish new habits that will help you get rid of them. Number three, learn something new. Your brain will function better for you when you use it more. While it's recommended that you don't overwork your brain, you also don't want to leave it dormant without anything new to learn. Thus, you can choose to learn how to dance, learn a new language, or learn a new instrument. However, make sure you're first aware of your learning style if you want to learn new stuff more effectively because, with this, you'll be able to learn quicker and maximize your strengths. Number four, follow a brain training program. There are some brain training programs that can help you to train your brain to learn anything faster, think faster, and improve your memory. You can even take advantage of these programs without stressing yourself, since it's something you can do while lazily sitting on your couch. All thanks to the internet world. Number five, work your body. If you want to improve the fitness of your brain, you should exercise more. Moving your body can help to increase your alertness level and make you learn faster. It can as well help to create those new neural connections faster in your brain. You stand to enjoy a lot more than just 20 minutes of exercise. Number six, spend time with your loved ones. Your mood can be lifted and you'll be able to think more clearly when you engage with loved ones and talk with others. Having meaningful relationships in your life can really help you develop optimal cognitive abilities and train your brain. Number seven, avoid crossword puzzles. To an extent, crossword puzzles can be quite helpful, but they lack the full capacity to help prevent a disease like Alzheimer's or train the brain. Of course, crossword puzzles do improve our fluency, and many of us do think of crossword puzzles. When the thought of exercising our brain comes to our mind, but the reality is that they don't do much to sharpen our brain even though they can be quite fun. However, it's advisable that you go for another activity if you're doing the puzzle for brain health and fitness, but you may go ahead if you're just doing it for fun. Number eight, eat right. The importance of eating right cannot be overemphasized. Give your brain a good boost. Dark chocolates are very nice and they're highly recommended. Other foods that do help your brain to perform optimally in the long term include vegetables, fruits, and fish. You would also want to consider developing the habit of grabbing a bite or two of dark chocolate whenever you have something difficult to do because chocolate contains flavanols. They do have the potency to help you learn faster and remember better because of the dopamine they produce. In this video, we'll discover about simple brain training habits to boost your brain power. Number one, do your most difficult task in the morning. 
Our brain is always at its freshest in the morning. Therefore, it's recommended that the first thing you should do in the morning is to work on a task that demands lots of focus and thought. The thing is, after a good night's sleep, we feel very fresh, and our brain is relaxed to work at its best. So it's very important that you maximize that fresh energy to handle some of your toughest tasks. If checking your mail is the first thing you do in the morning, you're wasting that fresh energy on a simple task that could have been reserved for later. Prioritize tasks that demand concentration and higher creativity for the morning, and stay clear of meetings that occur first thing in the morning. Always have it in mind to explore and maximize your brain's higher energy levels by doing your most difficult, creative tasks. Number two, get enough breaks. Your brain isn't a machine that will work for hours without needing rest. In fact, even machines need rest and maintenance too, or else they could break down. You should know that your brain is tired and needs a break when you are making more and more mistakes. As you get engaged in focused work, you should be cautious of going beyond a certain amount. Maintaining concentration and focus for over an hour is somewhat difficult for our brain so breaks are very important. To take a break, you can just go to the nearest window and look at the world outside or even get up from your desk and head outside. Note that you'll not be giving your brain the right kind of break it needs if you switch to checking your social media feeds, thinking you're relaxing. Leave your phone behind, drop the work for now, and give your brain the break it needs from that screen. Number three, read books, not social media feeds. Books are very advantageous. You'll be able to solve problems and continually enjoy an increased ability to apply your derived knowledge in practical situations when you read good quality books. Make reading books a regular habit because reading social media feeds doesn't improve your general knowledge about anything worthy. When it comes to improved knowledge, there are no shortcuts. There are several things to learn ranging from philosophy and psychology to history, economic theory, and lots more. Number four, exercise regularly. The importance of exercising cannot be overemphasized. If you've been following closely, you would have noticed how vital exercising is not just to your body, but to your mind and brain as well. Whenever you exercise, your brain has more potential Potential to function at its best. We really need to move because our brain's functions get sharpened with the increased amount of oxygen in our brains that's induced from exercise. Your quantitative skills, reaction times, and cognitive skills are as well likely to improve when you exercise. So instead of just sitting at a desk in front of a screen, especially when you're confused or stuck, take a walk somewhere and you'll be surprised how ideas can be flowing into your mind. Number five, get enough of the right food. Eating enough of the right food will also help to boost your brain power. Many have experienced the feeling of tiredness and fatigue in the mid-afternoon at some point in their lives. This is called the afternoon slump, and it's often caused by the drop in blood sugar levels, which is resulting from the insulin produced by the body from the carbohydrates that was eaten at lunchtime. And when you experience this, you'll always want to curl up and go to sleep, and it will be very difficult for you to concentrate for longer periods. Nevertheless, there's always a way you can go around this. Whenever you feel a little peckish, have mixed nuts and dried bananas or some other healthy snacks around you that you can munch on. Tuna or chicken salad without pasta are fine examples of protein-rich lunches you can as well try to eat to prevent the afternoon slump. You'll feel a lot more energetic, improve your overall general health, and as well avoid the afternoon slump when you do this. Number six, drink enough water. Just as good food is necessary, adequate water is very vital too. Eating good food and drinking less water is not enough. You should make sure you level up the two. There's a high chance that your brain will not function at its best if you do not drink enough water. Why? This is simply because the human brain is made up of about 70% water. Now, do you see why you need to keep giving it what it's used to? Thus, do well to be properly hydrated if you want your brain to function at its best. You'll feel sleepy, lack energy, and there will be a reduction in your ability to stay alert, make decisions, and concentrate when you're not drinking enough water. Though drinking water will always make you visit the bathroom often, it remains a good decision to make because you enjoy the additional benefits of walking away from the screen, exercising. Number seven, don't deprive yourself of sleep. How do you expect to function at your best when you're not getting enough sleep? It's even quite funny that many do seek a long scientific study to convince them. It's just like you not eating and you expect to have energy. It doesn't work that way. Though you may not like sleeping too much, or you may not be able to sleep as much as you want due to the kind of job you do, it's still very important that you don't deny yourself the good sleep you deserve. Therefore, it's advised that you find what works best for you, because your circadian rhythms determine the number of hours you need. 
When you start getting enough sleep, you'll see that your brain's ability to function will improve. You'll feel a difference in your ability to stay focused on your work. Your energy levels will be increased, and your decision-making skills will become more applaudable. For most people, six to eight hours of sleep is enough. Eating the right foods, getting enough sleep, and exercising regularly are some of the few simple habits you need to develop to improve your brain. And with this, you'll see how easy it can be to improve your brain power. These tips are just simple common sense tricks anyone can use, and they do have the potential of helping you make better decisions, focus longer, and become more alert. There are several ways to make your brain smarter so that you can master any skill faster. The plenty of free brain training hacks and tips to improve your brain power offer you an opportunity to groom your brain to process information better and retain information easier. Through the simple acts you do, you wield the power to increase your creativity level, focus, and brain IQ. If you've been spending lavishly on joining brain training programs, know that you can become smarter and learn faster when you incorporate these tips, techniques, and hacks that have been outlined to help you become a smart learner. Stay smart, learn fast, 